I love Dragon Quest XI and that's an understatement. Ever since it came out in the US in 2018, I believe the game perfected the turn-based RPG formula. This is like a true love letter to the fans who grew up playing traditional RPGs and the developers kept the magic of its roots while having beautiful graphics with the legendary Akira Toriyama art. My nostalgia meter was off the charts and I just didn't want to ever stop playing. These days, some companies are doing more remakes because it seems like they're running out of ideas and they fail to make any good RPG games. Now making small changes can be great in game mechanics, but if it's something crucial like the battle system or storyline, the fanbase will notice quickly. I feel like the developers do it thinking it's innovation, and when you have a bunch of yes men on the team or the company's trying to milk the franchise, the game can come out sloppy. Sometimes you just gotta go back to that saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And that's exactly what happened with Dragon Quest games. I actually started playing them because I was so heavily into Dragon Ball Z and because I also liked Final Fantasy, it made it really easy to transition into the DQ universe. My first one was the 8th one for the PS2 and then I moved forward with the titles that were released on the DS and 3DS. They were all spectacular until the 11th one came out for the PS4. I was shocked and nearly in tears of happiness seeing a DQ game in the high highest quality it's ever been makes me feel proud of Square's approach. The gameplay, the animation and the music is something I'm always so fond of. But you know what would increase the fondness is your support for this channel. I know that I'm a few years late for this video, but if you enjoyed it by the end, consider subscribing for more RPG content. With that said, let's keep going. Dragon Quest XI is Square's first console game since the PS2 era and things are starting to look up for future releases. After all, it sold over 6 million copies worldwide since its release and these numbers may have changed the company's perspective on the potential of this franchise. The one thing I'm confused about now is why they're taking so long to release DQ12 and DQ3 Remake. Maybe after the whole Square Enix shedding 2 billion dollars off their value could have slowed down production in some ways, but what do you think about that? Now, about Dragon Quest XI, when it comes down to the HD graphics, there's nothing really special about it in 2023, but what I would argue what makes it unique is the character models and the environments. Having that famous art style is extremely cool and considering all the games coming out recently, it's still very relevant, especially in Japan. Some western developers always judge these types of games saying they're too old school or their turn-based battle system is too slow paced. This is where I have to disagree and say that is what's good about them. These kind of game mechanics are for patient people who don't mind grinding in this comfortable environment. Not only is it nostalgic but something to look forward to anytime we're having a bad day. Sometimes I don't want to play anything that requires too much effort or button mashing and this is where these turn based RPGs come in. I want to feel the thrill of leveling up but maybe at a softer level of gameplay and a lot of 9 to 5 Five workers probably feel this way too. I love this game's exploration because the world map is not only complicated but so thoughtfully created. I always like the idea of going into a random place where the normal enemies are so overpowered and from there having to slowly and strategically kill them. This is the kind of grinding I like where I simply have to struggle to level up. This kind of mentality also allowed me to love Soulsborne games and what a thrill they are. When it comes to the bosses and Dragon Quest 11, I found them to be fairly difficult and like in any other RPG, we just have to be at the right level range to beat them. The loots that we get during exploration is also another thing. We can get simple gear items but when we use them on the cauldron to craft, things get really interesting. Getting a 5 star weapon crafted near the end of the game can be frustrating as hell and that's all I have to say. What makes it interesting is you don't need to do all that to beat the game. These are just side content that you you can do and it's created with familiar Dragon Quest elements. One of my favorites is gaining new attacks or magic from the skill tree. It kinda reminded me of the sphere grid in Final Fantasy X but on a really small scale. I'm really fond of these kind of systems because you have to work hard for the prize and sometimes it could take hours to get an achievement. When you use those upgraded items or new skills during battle, it just feels really good to see a difference in power. This is especially awesome when the characters 
characters do their combo attacks during their pepped up states. A few years ago, there has been a lot of talk about the character stories not being the best. And I agree with that, but to a point. First of all, they are supposed to be simple and easy to emotionally connect with. Like Rob's relationship with the Luminary and his kingdom. Or Silvando's career choices and lifestyle that his father disapproves of. If you were to write one of their stories on a sheet of paper, the most you'll get is probably a full page. They're not supposed to be complex, but easy to mentally digest, and that's how Dragon Quest has always been. In my opinion, the deepest it went in this game is the Luminary's past and present story, and his relationship with the tree and Mordigan. The very nature of this franchise reminds me of Dragon Ball. The characters don't need to have a long and complex storyline for the show to be good. A simple hardship in a character's life could still have many people emotionally connected, like Vegeta's life or Master Roshi's wisdom and pervertedness. The simplicity of the music and sound effects also play a role in making Dragon Quest unique and familiar. The battle music or the level up sounds are all the same throughout the DQ universe, and Square has done the same for some of their Final Fantasy games. This is after all just a game, and in my opinion it's the best one in the franchise in terms of gameplay and graphics. But for this story, that is all up to you. Anyways guys, that's all I have for today. If you like RPG content, make sure to like and subscribe for more. See ya!